what I'm working on here. Obviously, we're fairly deep into the uh, Towns game. Oh, I'm going the wrong way again. I started putting a roof on my arena, and that's a tricky... I probably got a lot more scaffold than I need, but I had scaffold right there and scaffold right there, and they were throwing roof pieces just everywhere, and I had to delete them. So I just threw a, a lot of scaffold because it's easier to build scaffold than it is to these uh, roof pieces. Let's see, where are you? Roof pieces are under walls, roof pieces. Each piece takes two stone plus red color. Now to have red color, you have to make the atelier. And I'm just guessing. Any of these French, I think they're French words, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I studied German. There it is. But you need to lay that out, and there it is in the game. Okay, I studied German, and I speak a lot of street Spanish. Not a lot, but some, and, and can function in Spanish. Okay, you need that to do color mixing benches, or to do colors. So anyway, and it comes, of course, from red flowers. You probably figured that out. That's pretty obvious. But anyway, we're pretty far along here. That's my point. We have red gel roads. I have a green gel road. Supposedly, according to the game, or the wiki, the gel roads are the fastest roads. Now, if you notice, whoa, he followed a road. Normally, they don't follow roads. So I think the roads might do better in the dungeons where they're traveling huge distances later on. And I'll show you that in a minute. But what I'm trying to do right here is do a little bit about strategy and some things to get the game started at first and uh, to keep people alive. When you first start out in the game, you have stockpiles. I'm going to start a fresh one over here. You have zones where you're going to build your various items, and you should probably start out with carpentry, and then go through various things in that, which I've already I've already done videos on all that. But you also want to make stockpiles. Now, when you make a raw material stockpile, you have an option that you may not find at first, which is manage stockpile. If you go into manage stockpile go down to miscellaneous disable bones don't be a stinky thing miscellaneous alright get rid of human corpse stockpile get rid of human remains alright manage stockpile if you're basically trying to keep your guys out of the dungeons once you build them under materials if you've mined any of this stuff and it's laying down there where there's a heavy monster population, just tell them not to go get it and then later on tell them to go get it when it's safer, when it's been cleared out by heroes or you've got better armor on your guys, whatever your reason for allowing them to. Don't forget about stone. If you've got guys going deep in your dungeon, look for what they're getting. You may have to disable stone. If you do disable any of the stuff and you key up a, queue up an item for them to build and there's like tongs are made out of iron. If you queue that up, they will go get that iron whether the stockpile wants it or not because you told them to go get that. So anytime that you don't want them to say, say you dug a bunch of iron and it fell through into a dungeon full of monsters and it hasn't been cleared out yet just disabling it here if you tell them to build something made out of iron they will go get that iron okay so don't forget to manage the other thing and I couldn't find this at first or it didn't occur to me but your colorings green gel blue red gel and blue gel uh, are coming from slimes I think they're calling them but anyway there's different slimes at different levels first levels are green then red then blue and those gels will be down there and they'll go pick them up so if they're picking up red or, or if you think they will you can disable those here 
So part of your stuff is under uh, colors. I haven't found heads anywhere. So I don't know. I don't, they tend not to gather them. What I would say is don't do the goblin popsicle stick because they'll go get you a goblin head. Don't queue it up over here under decorative outside items. Okay, I've got a kind of a list here. The thing on bones, let me go to my part of the map where I have froggies and toadies, where I used to have froggies and toadies. I don't know, do they disappear later in the game? Uh, I had a bunch of heroes and when they got bored in the dungeons they might have, I don't know if they respawn if you kill them all. They might have killed them out. I started it up to see if one would walk out. Wow, I just learned something new. But anyway, the thing about froggies and toadies is they kill stuff. So if they kill an animal and its bones are laying there and you have bones active for them to pick up, damn it, there's where I want to be. I want to be on my town. Okay, if you have bones active for them to pick up in your stockpile, they will go get the bones. Now, if they go and get the bones and they're wearing armor and they get killed, then uh, their, their bones or their human remains are there. That's why you want to disable that. But also, their weapons and armor will be there. So once you start getting or your heroes are down in the dungeons and you don't and they get killed with armor or weapons on, you need to go to this and I would just disable all of it because it's hard to keep track after a while of what weapons are down there. And they could just lay all the weapons wherever the hell they're standing and go pick them up. When you disable any of this stuff because you don't want them to go gather it, now, early on, I'd let them get the weapons and all that stuff because there won't be in the jungle unless you or one of your heroes carries some there. So that's no problem. But dungeons, if you're trying to keep them out of levels of it. Okay. Now, on all of these things, like later on, you get these uh, containers for your stockpiles. When you disable your stockpile, don't forget to disable your containers. Now they've moved all these because I wiped out the stockpile for a while because I wasn't sure how to, to manage this. But if the barrels are where they should be in your stockpile, this one's a raw material stockpile, it'll have disable raw materials barrels and it'll disable all those for collection. Now since these are outside the zone, I don't know if they, that would work on them now or not. But as long as you don't destroy your zone, they will normally still be in there. Same thing with your weapon chests and your uh, armor chests. If you don't want them going somewhere to pick up weapons and armor, don't forget to do the containers also disable them. So you could keep cut down on some of the wandering of your townies and they're getting killed on, early on by controlling your stockpiles. Another thing about these stockpiles, yeah, I'll go ahead and do this now. Another thing about these stockpiles is your people have happiness. This affects when you get immigrants in and you need immigrants. 13 people four months into the game is not good. There's people with 60 and 100 townies in their towns. So you want more immigrants. That's based on happiness. I don't know what the formula is. But you can do a couple of things, a lot of things for happiness. One was theoretically these roads connecting the arena. Uh, and that's kind of a down the road thing. The early thing is make sure they have personal rooms. Some people build these underground. I was having trouble underground. That's why mine are up here. And I might have built them up here anyway just to look at them. Okay. They need personal rooms. The more personal items you put in their room, you have to leave a room to get in and out. But the personal items build happiness. 
And I haven't mined gold for these chairs or these bird cages yet. I got the the I furniture items from a caravan. I also got some gold and silver, bought it raw, and built some weapons and armor. It's kind of the uber weapons and armor of the game, so I wouldn't have wasted on luxury items. But anyway, personal room, personal items, happiness. Okay? The other biggie, and it's big and bigger than that for me as far as I've played so far, is they have to rest. You need to get uh, at a point on your food in fact on food what I do is I make now they're kind of cranked up right now or they yeah they are but I back off on the food to minimal levels the left hand num the right hand numbers are build twos I didn't understand that at first but if you leave them build twos this is where they butcher the meat and you go to cooking this is where they cook the meat but if you set build two levels they'll always keep come over here and, and keep your food built up so you can start forgetting about certain things not forgetting but not being on top they've got four meat pies nine bread like I said it's a little bit cranked because I was running 14 townies before I lost another one and three heroes but Put this to a little above what you consider minimum, so they're not doing much of it. Then you want them to rest. So don't give them any more orders. Now, if they've got a bunch of crap laying around everywhere, like logs and these colors and all that stuff, I never could figure out, because if you haven't given them orders, they'll gather and gather and gather. So what you want to do is to go to your managed stockpile and disable everything that way they stop gathering and you need to do it in any stockpile that's where they're picking up items that you're generating or that are available for them to go pick up so in order to get more immigrants you have to have more happiness the best way to do it let their orders run out you have to have a certain amount of food but go ahead and turn your stockpiles off so they stop gathering. In my experience, they tend to, to, my, to move into the market area to goof off. Now, that may be different depending on what you've got built. I haven't had them move into the arena or anywhere else. But once you see them start standing around, and you can go up here and see what task, task sleep, task sleep, harvest. But... Once you start seeing them with no task and they're kind of hanging out in the market, happiness starts to be built up, you get an influx of immigrants. The thing about immigrants is they'll be unarmed and unarmored when they come in. And you should be aware they'll come in on the edge of the map. The mine come in there and they also come in here. So if you have like carnivorous plants or a lot of uh, trees, I think you only get the tree keepers. Tree keepers are bad guys that look like trees. If you chop a tree, I don't know if they look like fruit trees. But if you chop a tree keeper, he will try to kill the person that chopped him. Uh, there are also were pigs and uh, the ghosts of fallen heroes. Anywhere there's human remains or bones, a ghost can appear. And they can walk through walls and all kinds of, I think they do, and all kinds of happy stuff. But if you have a danger area, you need to deal with it if you're expecting any, you can't expect immigrants. They'll show up when happiness reaches a certain point. So, soda time. Phew. Okay, your immigrants arrive unarmed. Almost anything can kill them when they're unarmed. So, what you want to do is stockpile. Now, if you have iron or whatever, that's cool. But early on, you're probably going to have, if you've got bones disabled, you're not going to be able to build bone armor. And you might look at it. Maybe to you, it's worth the bump over wood to have bone weapons and armor. 
The problem is toadies and froggies kill stuff. It leaves bones. Uh, if they're gathering bones, they could easily get killed. One toady or froggy won't probably won't kill an armed townie, but three or four certainly will, and they may run into that many, or they may deliberately walk into a bunch. So the first thing your immigrants, the first thing I've watched them, the first things mine do is they run and they claim one of these rooms. Now as soon as they come in, I pause and tell them to equip, auto-equip. But to auto-equip, you have to have arms and armor ready. These have build twos on them, so I have them build wooden armor to at least five all the time, five or six. I've had fives of most immigrants I've got at one time, but that's by no means I have not played the game that long, so you decide what you want to do. Okay, also weapons. Now weapons, there's wooden stuff. The bow sounds like a good idea, but so many monsters close. I've seen heroes with really good bows and they were fighting in close more often than not. But you look at all the stats on this. What I was happy with that I can mass produce all the time is this. It's got good attack, it's got good defense, and it's got, a, you know, good, you know, not good compared to what's up later, but, but good for a starter. But it's got 400 defense, which is good. Now the mace will hit harder, but you'll notice the defense is like one quarter of what it is of the spear. So I've got a build to on that. So as soon as my immigrants come in, they can grab a spear, they can grab wooden armor. Now I'm not telling you they'll do that, because that's one irritating thing about this game. You'll tell them to auto-equip, they'll grab like a breastplate or a hat or a helmet, and a spear or maybe not even the spear and run off so you gotta keep an eye on them at first and make sure they get fully equipped so that's kinda rough but that's the way it is so anyway immigrants happiness turn your stockpiles off so people so everybody rests uh, have food on you know a uh, minimal but auto or you know eyeball your do you know what however you want to do it but build up happiness get new immigrants in get them armed and armored